This religious guy is smart. I don't know if he is or not, but if he's religious, it feels like to defeat Vosh in this debate, all you'd have to argue at the end of the day is, well, technically all of our ethics are going to ground out in something supernatural or something like not, not empirically or rationally justifiable. So how, why is yours any better or worse than the religious man's? That's, I, we'll see where that goes, but that would be like what I would immediately assume the challenge would be. And I don't know how Vosh responds to that. I don't think I've ever blamed all of societal ills on religion. I just think that being somebody that's listening or if you have the mind to be religious or believe in like supernatural stuff, I think it puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to evaluating like true things in the world, which can make reconciling differences between two people difficult when it comes time to make like policies and government. Uh-oh, Vosh is bringing out the mean words. Oh no. It's so much better. Oh, look how much better I made it. It's so good. Do we want to jump right into it or, or, or what? Like yeah, hit it up. Cool. Kill um, yeah, so I guess the first thing that I want to open with basically is getting a sense of your position with respect to antitheism. We haven't talked a whole lot about this. I've seen you talk to other people about it, but I wasn't, I'm not sure like what your stance is. Like if you're describing yourself as an antitheist, what does that mean? Um, I just don't like any kind of mysticism or superstition. Um, I'm, okay. uh, I, I don't, I don't think we can make any prescriptive statements on, um, metaphysics, uh, outside of the ones that are necessary for basic cognition. So like, um, uh, the, the metaphysical. Oh man. Okay. Before we get too far into this, um, Vosh, if you're listening, you need to copy some coherent ideas on anti-religious shit. The reason why I don't like religion usually is because, um, is because I don't like it when two reasonable minds can't reconcile a disagreement. And I think that's a really scary Destiny, thing. Destiny, I love you. Um, that religious people can get into a world to where they're telling you like how you should view the world or what kind of like things we should do in regards to our view of the world. And two reasonable minds could come to a disagreement and never actually reconcile because, oh, well, God said this or whatever said that. And that it's hard to have a reasonable discussion about that in religion, right? What, like, well, if you disagree, I guess we just disagree. There's nothing we can do. Um, but definition here is leaving him open to m more shit, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah. Belief in causality, you know, the reliability of our senses, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, you have to make those leaps, otherwise you literally can't participate in the world. You, 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 you would just have to die if you can't. Right, it, we both agree solipsism is not necessarily the most helpful position, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah. to avoid that, I mean, to, you know, anything beyond that, right? You can make basic assumptions, but any any metaphysical stuff outside of that, I, I completely reject. Because um, I, I, I don't like the word metaphysical because metaphysics is like a branch of philosophy. Like when we talk about like ontology, that's part of like metaphysics. Like metaphysics is just your understanding of the, of the world from a philosophical sense. Just say supernatural. I know it sounds less cool, but uh, supernatural is a very clear word. When you say supernatural, I know exactly what you're talking about. When you say metaphysics, like I don't believe in metaphysics, like you don't believe in like the existence of anything, or what do you what do you mean when you say metaphysics? Because that's just that's like our fundamental physical understanding of the world um, from a philosophy standpoint. Just say supernatural. I think it's I think it's a much clearer word. But I understand like you want to say metaphysics because it makes you sound smarter or something. I don't know. I just I think you should just say supernatural. I think it leads people into really dangerous positions where okay. they're capable of making rational utilitarian um, conclusions mm -hmm. based on information that I don't think is real. Uh, so, so like, for example, if a person believes in some kind of metaphysical thing, like a spirit or like a deity, you know, with a given set of values or principles, beliefs, something about the world that isn't empirically testable, it's possible that they could arrive at a rational conclusion about the world that I would consider immoral based on information they have that I can't argue them out of. You can't argue a person out of like a like a metaphysical belief unless you're willing to do that whole like, here's a different interpretation of the Bible type deal. And that's not like a reliable process, especially if a person's- uh, If this, so the if this religious guy is smart, I don't know if he is or not, but if he's religious, it feels like to defeat Vosh in this debate, all you'd have to argue at the end of the day is, well, technically all of our ethics are going to ground out in something supernatural or something like not not empirically or rationally justifiable. So how, why is yours any better or worse than the religious man's? That's, I, we'll see where that goes, but that would be like what I would immediately assume the challenge would be. And I don't know how Vosh responds to that. I'm not an adherent to a, um, 
like a major structured religion. You know, it could just be kind of a crapshoot on how much their positions can actually move. What's your favorite type okay. of vegetable? And do you um, enjoy it cooked or raw? Um, all vegetables cooked. I don't know. I like every green vegetable. Every green vegetable with any kind of spicy Asian or Indian sauce is like always good to me. So is this a is this a position that you have like a policy position on? Like, those their anti theist policies that you would want to enact, or is there like, or is this just like a rhetorical point? That's no, I'm I'm pro freedom of religion. I, okay. I don't think it should be extended to any kind of state persecution. So, um, the, yeah, I guess but, uh, I mean it's a, more of an ethical thing, I guess. Okay, so like I I guess my feeling on anti theism is that if it's a position that in which enacting any policy relating to it would be like a violation of human rights. Why do you subscribe to the position? Like, because I get, I get kind of like where you're going with respect to. Um, I, I see your, I see like your position, but I'm wondering that I guess how do you get there? If there's well, no, if there's no policy position that you can get with it, then that without violating human rights, then why would you subscribe to that position rather than going some other route? I th well, I think it's a cultural shift. Um, I feel the same way about like gender abolitionism. I don't think you can policy your way over to that point. I think gotcha. you need to kind of socially discourage some avenues. I don't think there's any practical or ethical way to enforce anti-theism through the state. Um, I don't. I think like we like we have micro experiments of this in like the um, the Soviet and uh, Mao's China's bans on. Um, on religion, you know, right. like the state atheism type thing, but like it didn't really change anything. Functionally, it didn't change anything even for the people who deconverted because for those who didn't practice their religion in secret, a lot of them just started adopting mantras of the state with a religious um, fervor. So it, it ended up not really changing anything. It's like a long-term cultural project. So I guess if you're, if you're gonna have like that kind of, I guess I, this isn't necessarily where I was planning on going, but like if you're gonna have that kind of behavior What's your goal with anti-theism then? Like, what's the end result that you're you're wanting to go for there? Same as with gender abolitionism. It's just something that I care about ethically. I don't think that it's possible to, like, vote in a guy who will make a big change or whatever. Okay. Um, I just, it's like, a, it's like a guiding set of principles, right? Because there are lots of things that I think are bad that we shouldn't do that I also don't think you can really legislate against. Like sure. a lot for, for like a lot of abusive behavior that you would do to a partner. The only stuff that crosses the threshold into like potentially illegal, like goes into like physical abuse or financial crimes, you know, but mm -hmm. you can never make gaslighting illegal. That'd be insane. Can you imagine? Yeah, no, I, I feel that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like yeah. you, you can't you can't meaningfully legislate on that. But obviously, like, you know, culturally, we can still move towards the idea that you should treat your partner with respect. So uh, I guess let me get into my position then on anti-theism, because I think that I'm in opposition to largely what you've expressed. I think that your position is a little bit more reasonable than what I've heard some people say. I must be I pray you uh, find Islam so and I've encountered a number of different perspectives on anti-theism, one of which would be wow. like the lowering the number of religious people in the world and elevating the number of atheists in the world, for example. Um, and I think that that's, that gets into dodgy territory. Are you, is that, does that describe where you're at or does that not describe where you're at? I mean, through a cultural project, right? There are people making the choice to not be religious or the rejection of religious principles or any kind of spiritualism, but yeah. not through any like state project. I, I mean, ideally, I would want to live in a fully secular world. Yeah, but it, I don't I don't even know if that's necessarily possible. Just I don't like either. A, yeah, like yeah. A, just like a, a, a mathematical sense. And I think any attempt to do so through policy or force would be more destructive than whatever benefits you could possibly extract from it. Yeah. I, so I think that also the cultural enforcement issue winds up being not just as bad. It's like it's just a different form of the same problem because um, you wind up just like shaming people arbitrarily. I think that uh, let me suggest like a different approach because I think that anti-theism stands in contrast to another social strategy of pluralism. Um, and I, th I think that that's a better approach when it comes down to coalition building. I think that when anti-theism is kind of like a scorched earth approach and because when you're setting yourself up as an anti to something, it's going to result in like toxic behavior. And the question with that is going to be, is the toxicity that that kind of cultural narrative promotes, is that going to be, is that going to be hitting the kind of people that you want to hit with that toxicity? So for example, if you're an anti-fascist, you're going to be hitting to fascists with toxicity. What's bad about that? nothing so okay fine if you're uh with an anti with an anti-theist position though you do wind up hitting 
a bunch of theists with toxicity. And if you're interested in coalition building, that's going to be hitting a lot of people that are like on your side on most issues with everything except for like their religious belief. So well, I agree that for coalition building, it's always a better idea to spread the net as far as possible. Mm -hmm. But obviously there, there have to be considerations within that, right? Like, yeah. so I believe in coalition building with people, like lots of people with moral positions that I disagree with. I right. mean, I, I've gotten in trouble with the left for believing like, should like edgy libertarian leaning kind of racist white dudes have an opportunity to join the left on some issues? Like, yeah, absolutely. Because better to have them on our side than not, you know? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't then think like, well, we shouldn't exclude or criticize those ideas because it could be more effective to coalition build with them. Sure. Um, and, and I do think that, that, that spiritual thinking is harmful. I just think it's indirectly harmful. Okay. Um, it's not harmful for what it is. It's harmful for what it enables. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily fit. Because how often when it comes to like coalition building, do you consider metaphysics, right? It's a little, it's, it's kind of a unique case. Um, the whole like issue with religiosity. Um, and my, my goal isn't necessarily to like shame people because you can't, you can't shame people out of religion. Um, I, I got uh, maybe one in a thousand. I don't know. That's not, that's not reliable. Um, but I, I, you know, it's so c consider it like a non-pragmatic position to hold. But I still think it's important. Like you still have destiny. To don't you think goals. it's disingenuous how you blame religion for the behavior that right now secular atheist lefties are engaging in the most in society, purity testing, heretic burning, dogmatism, moralizing every issue, etc. When do I blame religion for moralizing every issue? I don't think you have any idea what my stances on religion are. You haven't heard listen to anything I've said. I don't think I've ever blamed all of societal ills on religion. I just think that being somebody that's like listening or, or if you have the mind to be religious or believe in like supernatural stuff, I think it puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to evaluating like true things in the world, which can make reconciling differences between two people difficult when it comes time to make like policies and government and shit. Mind, right? Um, and that's, so why, that's like, cool. okay. Um, I think that when you're talking about an end goal that is like entirely secular, that winds up being like effectively called. I have watched so much of your show on religion stop capping. Okay, when I talk about moralizing every issue, I bring up both sides of that. I almost blame the left more than that, but it's very rarely does it involve me saying anything about religion, moralizing every issue. Usually I'm talking about like rent control and shit like that. There's no religious aspect to that. Dogmatism, I accuse a lot of people of being dogmatic. Um, purity testing and heretic burning, um, I, this is generally the left that I usually accuse this of. I, I don't, I've, I've never made any of these accusations like uh, intrinsic to religion. But if religion was the common denominator, wouldn't we expect less, not more from atheists in society? I don't think religion produces like all of these societal ills. Um, I'm not even hardcore like anti-religious. I just I don't kind of, I don't like it, but I don't have like a strong position on it. I don't know if I'd want the world to be full of atheists. Cultural genocide at that point, because you're looking at an end goal of eliminating indigenous practices, uh, several religions across the world, various types, um, yes. ultimately, right? Like that's, it's a, it winds up being like a colonial position. Uh, sure. I mean, okay. there are plenty of other things that I want, like, culturally eradicated. Like slavery. Like, um, like um, sex trafficking. Uh, <clears throat> patriarchal tribal structures. Fuck. I think those okay. are pretty unethical. I, I mean, if that means eventually the stigmatization of a bunch of indigenous cultures, then yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, there are plenty of cultures or cultural elements that I think need to be... Um, and just spiritual true. belief is, is one of those for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, on my position on that is when you're looking at I, I'm a big fan of looking at uh, religion kind of like in a, in a rational way. And I think that somebody can be a theist and rational and an atheist and rational. And I think that that's exemplified by the number of people that are in philosophy of religion who are on both sides of this issue. And so when you're looking at like an end goal and saying spiritual beliefs bad, I think that in order to have that kind of thing, you need to, you need to show that like, the spiritual belief is the reason why it's bad. And I, I don't think that's the case. I think that the cause usually when we're criticizing religion is in some other place other than mere God belief rather than, um, you know, something else like somebody being an authoritarian and being religious as well. And then utilizing that religion for authoritarian purposes, for example. Well, the issue is that if a person's bad behavior is rooted in some way in a spiritual or metaphysical justification, there's literally nothing you can do to argue them out of it. There you um, go. It becomes completely impossible unless you want to adopt their own moon logic and just take a roll of the dice and hope that it... Moon logic. Uh-oh. Vosh is bringing out the mean words. Oh, no. 
their brain ends up like reconciling those new pieces of information in a way that's mm -hmm. favorable to you. Um, but there's no real way around it. I mean, a big example of this right now would be the fact that um, a huge, like a block with a ton of political power in this country is fundamentalist Christians. Right. And fundamentalist Christians often believe that the global warming isn't anthropogenic. It's caused by God as part of the end times that predicate the rapture. And the rapture is something they're looking forward to. They have been for a very long time. So they either don't care about or actively kind of root on climate change, something that would kill hundreds of millions of people charitably um, because it suits their metaphysical, you know, like morals. And there's nothing I can do to push them out of that outside of like pulling out a Bible and hoping that I can like beat them to death with the right scripture, like actually, no, not that, not that. But you can't yeah, really yeah, yeah. argue them out of it. And that's very dangerous, you know. Religion gives a supernatural pretext to existing justifications. It allows people to dress up irrational arguments um, and make them rational through the addition of extra factors that can only be justified metaphysically. Stop. This is, um, I don't know if they'll go there, not to bring up like trans arguments for everything, but a very interesting counter to this narrative. So what Vosh is essentially arguing is that religious people are kind of bad here because they can twist empirical fact to fit some moral or religious belief they have, which I would argue is kind of true. But then one interesting counter to that would be, well, what about people that say that trans women are women just because it makes society feel better? Like, isn't that kind of your argument? Like, as long as there's a good moral end, who cares if we twist or bend fact or epistemology to get there? Like, aren't you the one saying that, like, whether or not Nazi Germany, you know, Holocaust to the Jews depends on who wins the wars? Like, that's kind of a Vosh argument, a Voschian argument, one could say. Stuff like that is really, really, really dangerous. And that to me is the underlying issue. There are smart religious people and rational religious people. Einstein was, you know, religious, you know, there's there's a lot of that, but the religiosity is always itself irrational, much as in the same way that intelligence is highly compartmentalized. My, you can have people who are very smart. Um, one, one second, my chat is like, is freaking out at me and saying we, okay. we skipped introductions. Um, <laughs> so I'm yeah, I, I, uh, hear your point and I want to address them uh, and we might have to, to retread that ground a little bit but um, I do want to let I guess all y'all know I am pagan I'm not a Christian um, so I'm a polytheist YouTuber that does uh, you know a lot of content around um, paganism and philosophy and that kind of stuff so I'm here and I make a lot of the same criticisms that you just made against certain forms of religion and, and uh and even paganism so but it's the logic right it's the um it's the spiritualism underlying it all um you know e even if you change the religion itself the belief in any kind of spiritual or metaphysical like force that can't be empirically accounted for i mean then you could justify whatever believing in a soul for example is very dangerous if a person believes in a soul or reincarnation or an afterlife or whatever their weight on death is going to be very different than what a secular person's weight on death is going to be. That's like a that's a moral uh, calculation that just gets totally fucked up by the introduction of a lot of, you know. It's just, too, his analysis is always just so simplistic. He never considers both ends of things. The, um, and I know these arguments because I used to be such a crazy atheist. I'm still atheist. But um, the existence of a soul can introduce a lot of problems. Absolutely. Um, if you assume that everybody wants to become like a suicide bomber, right? You know, the 9-11 the hijackers, believing that they had souls, thought that there was like a reward in, in the afterlife for them. That could be true. It could also be the fact that the existence of souls in an afterlife is what motivates us to do better for the future, right? Well, do you really give a fuck about climate change if there are no souls? What if it was the fact that when we died, that's it, and there's no afterlife whatsoever? Who the fuck cares about climate change 200 years from now or 100 years from now? If once you're dead, you're gone and done and everything doesn't matter anymore, who cares? But if there's an afterlife and there's a heaven and you're waiting for a future family to join you, you're looking down, you could argue that in that case, souls are something that keep you invested and motivated in the well-being of the future. Now, I'm not saying that either of these arguments are necessarily true, but I'm saying that's one way that you could cast a soul in a positive light. The idea that there are ramifications for your actions that extend beyond death keep you motivated in performing actions that are good, that have ramifications beyond death, is one argument you could have. You know, um, let me pop a meal in the microwave. Hold on one sec. You know, um, mystical shit. So, okay. Um, as far as soul belief, wait, were you saying this is a problematic part of soul belief? Well, it, it necessarily cheapens death. Okay. It has to because it now. Oh, that, like this is like, oh, man, I wonder if this guy, I don't know how equipped this guy is for these debates. 
But like, you can view that as completely the opposite. That like, souls don't cheapen death at all. Arguably, you could say atheism cheapens death. Because once you die, who the fuck cares? It's all over. Like, nothing matters anymore, right? Like, whereas for souls, you could say that you're highly motivated to do things that are going to be noble past your death. It just depends on... It means that you, there, it's not an end to everything. If you believe in reincarnation, you might think killing an unfortunate person might actually be morally right because you're sparing them that life and sending them to a to another one. Okay. So I've got a couple of distractions going on. I guess uh, as far as like the soul is concerned, I'm heathen. I hold that uh, the soul is in multiple parts and that as one dies, that breaks apart and it can be considered the end. Uh, I'm not necessarily against the idea of like reincarnation or any of that kind of shit. And... But at the same time, I don't see that as necessarily like a harmful belief. One of the the things that I got into with respect to history on the belief of the soul and afterlife and that kind of shit. I hope I'm agnostic on the afterlife. I don't think that you can reasonably it, afterlife is different than even God belief, in my opinion. I think that you there's less of a case for afterlife than there is a, of a case for uh, deities. But at the same time, I think that I don't have an issue with traditionally holding to an afterlife view of some sort. But it's, it's that being said, right? like you could well, be like no, really I don't. Dangerous if you're I don't think that it's dangerous inherently. I think no, that you can wind up good creating a dangerous narratives around it, though. Yeah, and I think that that's true not with a lot right. of things. And I think well, that if you start saying that you're against everything, that in order to have that, if you're against everything that can have dangerous narratives around it, you're going to be banning a hell or not banning, but you're going to be trying to be culturally against a hell of a lot more than religion. Politics, for example, politics and is something you can build tons of dangerous narratives around. You can build dangerous narratives around the form organization of government. Well, wait, that isn't, there, the, the, you know. the difference isn't just can it be used for bad? Mm -hmm. It's can it produce in a person a conclusion that can't be argued against? Yes. So politics, hell yeah. Well, no, no, because as long as a person is basing all their judgments off of empirics and your axioms are. Do people do that in politics? <laughs> are, are, are politics entirely empirically driven? Wait, come on. That's very naive, Vosh. That's a very Voshian statement. Um, let me get my food. Vosh isn't even empirically driven. He's saying he's a socialist ideologue and socialist because of unprovable axioms. Yeah, I know. It's kind of, so it's a weird position for him to take. Yeah. They're aligned. Um, you can, you can reason people out of arguments theoretically, but if a person <laughs> believes there's a God and believes that God is telling them to kill, there's no moral argument you can make against that person. There's no benefit. I, I disagree with in, that. In the so, spiritual, there's not like a, a thing you get that you don't get through rational or empirical thought, but you do gain the ability to obfuscate real empirical moral judgments mm -hmm. um, with spiritual factors. So, uh, Historically, we do have some kind of like gates that are built up around that kind of subject. And uh, there's a couple of historical thinkers that I want to kind of toss your way uh -oh. with respect to uh -oh. this conversation. And I think that this is where I get anti-theism doesn't necessarily He's work as much as a pluralist approach. Philosophy that if you're going to be what? criticizing atheist. religion and taking a pluralist standard, you're going to be able to criticize those things in a way that is going to appeal to people that maybe even are uh, ignoring empiricism in some way, which I'd argue that most people do anyway. Yep. I think that if you're outside of religion, there's a lot of people that will say that they are, are into empiricism, but generally aren't. Yep. Most that's people, fair. a lot of people don't think rationally generally. I've, 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 that's my opinion. Um, yep. And I think that a, a rational or irrational narratives can appeal to people who aren't religious or are religious. Yep. It's the religion part doesn't necessarily predict one way or the other. It's, uh, but if you hold a pluralist narrative and say, instead of an anti-theist narrative, then you're going to be able to start building standards with respect to how we engage with other people. Somebody saying that, you know, their God wants to kill, other, wants them to kill other people is going to be anti-pluralist. So if we're thinking with a, a pluralist approach, then that person can easily be uh, ethically argued out if they're in a society on, that's, that strengthens pluralism. Uh, so pluralism um, can you put, is a set of, here, I'm going to send the- You can put salt on chicken, right? Can I do that? That's a war crime. Wait, what are we? What are we talking about? Listen, in the mid, I don't know. I think this is a Midwestern thing. I learned this. <clears throat> you in in the Midwest, we put salt and pepper on every single fucking thing we do. 
Like, when you get a plate of food, you can have a steak, uh, like potatoes, corn, and whatever else, and you will salt and pepper your entire fucking plate, okay? <laughs> but I don't know if that's normal or not. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm pretty sure you can put salt on literally anything. Okay, who cares? Actually, here's a question. I didn't know these would be good. Have you ever had... <clears throat> have you ever had salted cookies? That's some good ass shit. It truly is. Or like vanilla ice cream with like salt in it. Oof, I don't know why. It feels weird. It doesn't feel right eating it, but it's Wild good. Wild Destiny, how white are you? How whiter than your mom. Oh! Oh! oh these to you on discord i've got this is uh, I'm, I'm familiar with the concept the problem is that you're you're building a house on a rotting foundation oh like you can arbitrarily develop a set of moral beliefs that align mm -hmm. with mine through religiosity but i don't really value those beliefs that you've arrived at because they're they're built on on shaky ground Ooh. okay so the you're things that i want to send you about pluralism are, are constructed by an atheist activist that's fine i'll still disagree with them oh um, they're holding it without any, it's an ethical system. I think I that the, the criticisms that you're putting forward right. on, the criticisms you're putting, putting forward against religion are ethical, right? No, the, so, no, the problem, they're not, they're not ethical. It's not that religious people are necessarily less ethical. It's mm -hmm. the system, they've opened themselves up to non-empirical information. They, they trust things based on faith. As soon as you start doing that, you introduce factors into ethical decision-making that can't be accounted for and can't be reasoned against. How do you do, the, the killer question is, well, okay, Vouch. How do you do ethics from an empirical position? Are you telling me you can derive an ought from an is? Or explain that, walk through that, because you can't do that, right? <clears throat> Ask him, hit him up with it. Um, there's no, there's no like backbone to it. I think a lot of people are irrational, even secular people. I recognize that. Yeah. But there are ways to address that through education. You can't counter with religiosity education. Because even if a person is highly educated, a religious belief that aligns them with different sets of axioms, or God forbid, if they're one of those types who thinks that anything God does is necessarily ethical. Um, yeah, I think that that's a, that's, that. this is a problem that um, will show up where I'll agree with you with respect to criticism of religion in this regard, and but I think that it's something Top that- also. Carmel sucks. Fuck you. It shows up with respect to specific religions that have supremacy narratives. But that, it's fine even if they don't, it's still a problem. I, I See, this is where I disagree, that if you have a religion that doesn't have a supremacy narrative, a lot of the things that you're talking about wind up going by the wayside. There's what, things that just don't show up. What do they believe? I just, I'm a- <laughs> For my particular manifestation of religion, right? I, this is not, I don't engage in a supremacy narrative. You can be an atheist, that's fine. I can be heathen, that's fine. That's not necessarily well, an issue. What do you believe that contradicts empirical reality? What additional, uh, what, what- As far what as like contradicting it? No, I'm, I'm, I think that empiricism is a useful tool for uh, engaging with reality. Just like I think that there are other useful tools for engaging with reality. If well, we're well, looking at history, like, for example, if you're looking at history, you're going to be engaging with history and different assumptions that aren't necessarily empirical in order to build a narrative with information. The, it, difference, is, the difference is that those are analytical methods that are meant to provide right. an understanding of something empirical, whereas religion, superstition, adds just like, there's, there's no, there's, it's not analysis to believe there are like spirits or fairies or whatever. That's just right. an I extra think that, thing that a person believes. And I'm against superstition, but I'm against superstition in a way that the Romans and Greeks have criticized it, not with respect to just say, labeling Salt all religious beliefs as superstition. Chef's well, then what do you believe that I would disagree with, assuming that I'm a fully, uh, uh, you know... Um, well, I mean, I believe the gods exist, so I mean, we probably disagree on that. Um, but, but I'm holding go. that the that gods exist... Said, but you just said you were against the. <clears throat> mm. I bet Destiny doesn't like caramelized onions. You know what? True. I don't like caramelized onions. I think onions have a really good flavor and a really good texture. 95% of the time when you get caramelized onions, you've taken the onions texture, you've turned it into this gooey fucking nasty shit and then the flavor is just like onion gel. 
I don't like caramelized onions. I think raw onions, especially like on burgers and shit are awesome, but getting like onion soup is fucking gross. I will, I will say I don't like caramelized onions. True, actually true. <clears throat> People be like, do you want an onion? And I'll be like, what do you mean? And they'll be like a, a crisp, white and purple, perfect, flavorful, zesty. You can snap it and you can hear the, in the air, the delicious flavors and aroma of the onion. Mm, oh, perfect. Then they'll go to fucking, uh, what's that name of that shitty restaurant in California that everybody likes, In-N-Out. And people will be like, get in caramelized onions. And it's this nasty soup of shitty fucking over oil, over buttered, disgusting onions that are just falling out of your, and you like bite it, and it's like, Ugh. disgusting. Actually disgusting. <clears throat> Actually disgusting. Stay mad. The superstition. Is that not? Right. Like God, look, I'm just, <laughs> just look at him. Oh, let people be like, look at how much better I've made my onions. <laughs> people be like, look at the improvement. Why would I ever? Now, hold on. Oh, I've seen you ironically seen better food takes on DSP canned tomato sauce cooking streams than I ever have out of your baby pellet mouth. Look at this crispy, flavorful. They sit correctly on a burger or you can chop them up, throw them in a salad. Flawless, perfect, delicious. Look at, uh, <laughs> look at you people eat this shit. It's, it's so much better. Oh, look how much better I made it. It's so good. Uh, put it on my burger. Unbelievable. The flavor's been cooked the fuck out of it. It tastes like a buttery, oily mess. There's no texture whatsoever. It's just onion soup. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Ugh. Ugh. And that's why I'm saying that I'm against the superstition with respect to how the Romans and the Greeks criticized it, not with respect to labeling all of religion as superstition. So when Plutarch, uh, there's, there's Roman, Roman and Greek writer, Theophrastus and Plutarch. Theophrastus talk, uh, had a- This is important, how do you feel about pickles? I've grown. Let me give you, let me share with you my wisdom on pickles, okay? Let me share with you Now my... I understand why Vosh calls destiny a contrarian. Let me share with you my controversial opinion on pickles, okay? Pickles on sandwiches are okay. They've got a distinct flavor. If they're fresh and crunchy, it's okay. They don't have to be crunchy. They're, th those pickles are okay. When I go to Chick-fil-A, sometimes I forget to say no pickles. And you know what? When I get pickles on my sandwich, I'm like, you know what? These are okay. These are okay. What the fuck are these food takes? I ironically question why I listen to you when you talk about food. Please, no more. Hello? Um, pickles on sandwiches, they're okay. People that take the dill pickles out of the jars and eat them raw are sociopaths, okay? Sorry, not sorry. That is a factually true statement. Motherfuckers that are eating raw fucking pickles out of jars like that have problems. A disgusting fucking, these were always the grossest people. The absolute epitome of gross person. Um, yeah. There's your uh, true facts, true facts of the day with Destiny. Stay mad. The uh, text How of do you characters reconcile your hatred where he goes your through a series marriage? of... Um, ask your mom. ...of basically morally um, bad people. Uh, and just describes like these negative characteristics. And one of them was the superstitious man. And the superstitious man describes somebody Destiny who is absolutely debilitated. Well done. I hate your mom's pussy well done. Yeah. ...by trying to uh, adhere to every single religious custom that is part of his society, such that it, it uh, negatively impacted his life to the extent that he wasn't able to live. And uh, describes this as like a moral flaw, basically. So when you have somebody that is believing in religion in such a way that they're taking it to this sort of like extremity and uh, extremity 
impacting their own life in a negative way like that, that's where um, you can Obviously, criticize it as superstition. My threshold is, is well beyond that. Sure. Point. And I mean, so I don't even like horoscopes. I mean, I consider right. people who believe in horoscopes. And horoscopes can in, can manifest writing. in that way where you have somebody who is because of their horoscopes afraid to live, right? Like no, that we see that horoscope. manifestation. Like any at all, like any belief in it whatsoever. I I've got a not the best opinion on horoscopes generally, if you want my like absolute honest opinion, but at like the same time, if you're beliefs. if somebody Yeah, you're talking about the essentialism thing. I think I addressed that in my video to you. A, what is it, a year ago or some shit um but like Whoa, i think that there is like effects. an essentialism problem that shows up with horoscopes true i think that uh if you get into some forms of uh astrology i see this is one of those things this is a practice i'm not super familiar with so it's not something that i would stake my arguments on um so but you can have like uh fascistic expressions of it definitely like that's, and I think that that's true of heathenry, my religion as well. You, there's definitely fascistic representations of heathenry where you get into heathens that engage in a supremacy narrative, uh -oh. and that supremacy narrative winds up being a racist one. And but I don't want any of it. Right. I don't, I, so you're not. Non I'm against the supremacy narratives. They don't yeah, have don't to be against the religion in order to be against the supremacy narrative. But the religion's still a problem because it adds non-empirical factors into what would otherwise potentially be an empirical ethical analysis. And I mean, so do a lot of, like, if you're engaging in mathematics, if you're engaging in logic, you're going to have to start engaging in some non-empirical stuff. Empiricism is not an end-all be-all when it comes to... other milk-like products. So, yeah. Um, I've tried... I'm a, I'm a Midwestern boy. I grew up with Midwestern stuff, okay? I have a really hard problem or a really hard time with non-dairy like dairy milk because it all feels very watery to me. I've tried almost every type of milk. Um, I had a vegan girlfriend for a very short time at one point in time. So I've tried like vegan... Um, I've tried like vegan... Uh, what, I've, tried so, I've tried soy milk, almond milk, and coconut milk. And some of them are a little sweeter than others. But at one point in time... Or no, hold on, sorry. Fuck, I just read like three more things. Um, all of them taste too watery to me. They're not, they don't have the same full-bodied deliciousness of, um, of cow milk, I guess. I've never tried goat milk, but... Finding truth. Well, and when it comes there's to several studies across philosophy that do not in deal with empiricism, and I would, like, among them would be... A history deals with empiricism on some level, but you still have to uh, make a certain amount of assumptions, such as the documents that you're reading are somewhat reliable as I'm accounts anti, and that kind of shit. I'm not anti-philosophy, and I'm certainly not anti-analysis. I know that there are things that we do to obtain knowledge that go outside the bound of pure empirical measurement. Right. The One of those things is theology. Religious people make empirical arguments or believe empirically in things that aren't empirical. So the belief in the existence of a god isn't a philosophical framework. It's not an analytical You're narrative. saying they believe it empirically? If, if a person believes that something is capable of affecting the real world, analysis isn't. Analysis can't change the interaction of photons and molecules or whatever. Uh, philosophy can't. It informs the way we make empirical decisions. But if you believe there's a deity that can influence the physical world, you're making an empirical claim, not supported empirically. If the god is just this, like abstract philosophical concept like mm -hmm. a sort of anal like like an analytical no like a like a alliterative way of describing a, a process you know i would still take issue with it um because this often takes the form of like the personification of natural phenomena which impedes our understanding of it in a genuine empirical sense my perspective just, on polytheism would be like uh definitely into the realm of what you would be against then because i'm holding as the gods as external agents minds a we might talk about imminent polytheism or something like that and get into the kind of the, the various forms then of it. Might, but then you think they're again, empirical. You're making an empirical claim there. Because if they affect No, the no, world, not this, I folded empirical. the mind is non-physical. So, and I'm, I might be, uh, I've been leaning towards like idealism lately as a, with respect to like my philosophy of what the external world is, so. Do you get onions on pizza? I'm going to be honest, if they're raw onions, I'll probably eat them on almost anything. I think onions are base. Um, but can they, but like these gods, I mean, if they can direct the winds or control energy or matter mm -hmm. or anything like that, they must necessarily be empirical phenomena. They're in the yeah, realm you could of probably spirit. say some empirical things about the areas that they manifest. Like you could probably predict where the rain is going and say that that's fair or something like that. But I don't think that 
um, that that gives you necessarily access to Frere's mind or anything, just as knowing the parts of the brain doesn't necessarily give the ability to read a mind. And yeah, you know, maybe we'll you, develop that technology at some point, and it'd be interesting to see how that affects God belief or how we can interact with, like, if you have the ability, some sort of apparatus that is able to read a mind and utilize that in order to have some sort of communication with the gods and that starts getting revealed, then you start having empirical conversations about minds and gods and all of that kind of shit, and you wind up ha answering a few questions with respect to uh, mind-body problem and all this other philosophical crap that we've been hitting our heads with for millennia, but that's not where we're at right now. You this know what is I mean? what led to people doing rain dances. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... I have no problem with rain dances. Well, oh, I, I know, but I do, because they cause people to starve, because they thought they could solve their famines by dancing instead of other uh, approaches towards um, t towards agricultural management. It doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, I don't think that it matters necessarily, like, as far as this conversation goes, what, as, as far as the arguments whether or not God exists. I think that where I can hang my hat on and where you can hang your hat on is... Uh, that when you get into the upper echelons well, of the philosophical love conversation, this so isn't gross. a subtle matter. Flavorful, but I and I think that I've even heard you gross. say that we should be withholding judgment at wow. the end of the day, right? I'll withhold judgment when talking to people, but if I'm talking about why I reject these ideas, I mean, I have to be forthcoming about it. I, I think it brings ruin. Um, and it's an unreliable way of assessing a person's ethics, you know? No matter how you came to believe in what you believe in, the gods or whatever, you got that from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you got that from somewhere, that means there's a source from which you can derive non-empirical beliefs. And all right. it would like, take I mean, you believe that it... of that source of information for you to potentially believe in the valid, like the nature, like human sacrifice. You know, they did that for their polytheistic deities. And mm -hmm. how could I morally argue you out of that? If you genuinely believe that a famine could be settled with a human sacrifice, if that's an empirical belief that you hold, ethically, you're in the right. The problem is that your your predicating beliefs are incorrect. The existence of that god, the value of the human sacrifice. But I could never argue you out of that. So arguments against human sacrifice show up with Plutarch, uh, and I think that again we can talk about pluralism with respect to human sacrifice. Harmful practices are going to be the kind of thing which, as a pluralist, you're going to be objecting to. Why? Pluralism, I think, is going to be a better strategy us. here. But if What's the gods will reward us with bounty and food. If we prefer I'd argue even that. then, you, it's, if, even if you try to argue that kind of thing, I don't think that you could demonstrate that first off. And second, I don't think that uh, even if it's true, it's something that is worth engaging in because of the harmful practice nature of it. Well, we're not basing our beliefs on whether we can demonstrate it. That's the whole point. You don't either. Right. But so if nice. you're going to say that it's a good practice to do, you need to be able to demonstrate on some level that it's a good practice to do. And that's not... Uh, if you're gonna Sorry, hold on real quick. <clears throat> what do you think about people who put ranch on their pizza? One sauce goes on pizza, and it's that red pizza sauce. That's it. People that put ranch on it, or people that use like buffalo sauce, or any other weird pesto, all of that is disgusting, and those people are heretics. Gross. Especially with respect okay to with harming somebody. So what? You said you're okay with rain dances. Yeah. There's not a harmful element to that. Well, there's a very beneficial element to potentially ending a drought or a famine, right? I mean, right. They... How the fuck are ancient people going to end a drought or a famine if they're not rain dancing, Vosh? I'm pretty sure a lot of the time these rain dances were just like, it's spring, let's fucking dance because we think we think it brings like the fucking the water god or whatever to 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 rain on our fucking crops. I don't think people were like, let's plant all of our crops in the summertime or in the winter and fucking rain dance, and all of a sudden our shit is going to be taken care of, right? I don't think. <laughs> Like, I doubt they're doing, like, or if they were, those tribes probably didn't survive for very long. That would be my guess. Like, if somebody is, I'd say that if you're, uh, you know, if somebody is engaging in rain dances and or prayers for rain or something like that, that's not necessarily a problem because it's not a harmful practice. Right. If you're talking about human sacrifice, all of a sudden you're dealing with harmful practices, right? If, if people believe enough in the idea that showing glory to a deity will bring good mm -hmm. to do a rain dance... Human sacrifices aren't that far off. You we object to that to the same way we object to political beliefs that have the same kind of consequences. Genocide, but, group X, therefore, and that'll be better for our society. But I you know what I mean? Like that's a religion. I can do empirics in there. Right, you're going to be it, arguing against something that can't be demonstrated until you know what I mean. Like this, no, if you're at the point, religious people don't wait to see if it's demonstrated. Christian neither do right. the political narratives. The, if yeah, you have the political narrative that is like, hey, let's ranch with wings. Um, I think that using sauces on like wings um, can be really good. 
If you have a dog shit taste in chicken wings, why the fuck are you getting chicken wings with sauce that's so fucking disgusting on them that you need to add ranch afterwards? What the fuck are you thinking? Why would you do that? If you're getting good wings with a good sauce, why the fuck would you smother it in ranch or blue cheese? That's some degenerate level shit. Why would you do that? Like, oh cool, what kind of wings did you get? Oh, actually it's got, um, it's an Asian sauce. No, no, no. You don't know what kind of sauce it is because you're eating ranch chicken, you disgusting fuck. Don't talk to me about what kind of wings you got. You don't know what kind of wings you got. You got ranch wings. That's what you got, motherfucker. You've got blue cheese wings. Blue cheese is a really fucking strong dressing. Don't tell me you can taste anything out of that. You're fucking lying, okay? That's like going to a fucking $200 uh, a plate restaurant with steak and covering it in fucking ketchup. Why would you do that? Absolutely disgusting. Let's do genocide X, then you're not gonna have people that are gonna go, oh, well, can you demonstrate that first or whatever the fuck? Like that's, we've, we've seen that a couple of times in history, right? Where- well, for, Wait, first of all, most genocides have been committed by religious people. So we're kind of shaking, like we're arguing on shaky ground, like from the get go there. And second- Right, like, we were talking even about- Even I cannot stand of, by and let you continue to debase the great people of this land. Your terrible food takes are yours and yours alone and do not represent true Midwestern values. Show us your birth certificate to prove where you were born or be a. I don't know if most genocides, if we look at number of people killed, I don't want to play the old conservative talking card, but Mao and Stalin killed a lot of motherfuckers. And those are pretty expressly anti-religious uh, societies. I'm not sure if religious people have genocided more people than atheists. I don't actually know what the answer to that question is. I'd be careful in that one. I'm not arguing. Okay that secular people are always rational. I'm only saying that adding the religiosity adds an, adi an additional extra layer of like mm -hmm. immutable political, like invulnerability when it comes to argumentation. If a group of people like a community or a culture or whatever, believe there are gods in the sky that do reward them uh, with rain or with food or with bounty when they show those gods glory, the step up to human sacrifice is a totally rational one. This is why I hate that like Westerners arrogantly look down on human sacrifice in like Aztec culture or whatever. Like that's so much more barbaric than the fucking Crusades, which had like 5,000, 10,000, 500,000. I'm not gonna be defending now. the Crusades either. Crusades are obviously a harmful no, practice I, I, and anti-pluralist, right? So like, and I mean, wait, as a pagan, I'm not gonna have a wait, good position on, well, on the Crusades. Well, wait. I think that even Christianity in general, you might be able to make some pluralist arguments against. However, uh, because I think that with Christianity, we find a uh, proclivity towards authoritarianism. And that proclivity towards authoritarianism is what lends to shit where you get into the justification of harmful practices, regardless of the effect. Because well, now not, you have a supremacy narrative. Now you have authoritarianism. But I'm not saying that you're would be pro-crusades. I'm only arguing that from the perspective of the Aztecs, the idea of human sacrifice was an empirically justifiable one. They already believed that showing glory to the gods would bring them bounty. So empirical? I was, wait, what do you think empirical is? Uh-oh. Because they thought the gods were an empirical force in the world. If you presuppose that, that the gods exist empirically, Wait, and they can what, affect the what does world. that mean? Empirical what is empirical? Force? Like, sorry, maybe material. Maybe I'm misusing the word. Like a material. Okay. They believe the gods are a material force in the world. I don't and think that they thought that. that. I don't, as, as polytheists, we generally hold that the um, non physicalness is an aspect of the, or is sure part of the. The, the but, Aztecs did believe. That the Aztecs the were not physicalists. And regardless, as, as far as like the Aztecs being, we can take the it to another. Let's move from the Aztecs oh. to uh, the history no, of my religion. Hold on, one second, one second. I, I, you can't one second me. I, I have I wanna give, oh, no. You can still talk about human sacrifice. I just want to move it to a religion I'm more familiar with. Uh, we can talk about the history of my own religion, which has human sacrifice in it, and we can discuss it from there. It's just, I want to move it out of like... Uh, out of, out of that conversation into one that I have a little bit more familiarity with, but still has the same problem so that we can discuss it subsequently. <laughs> Debate tactic. Okay. All right. Don't let him do it, Vouch. So heathens in the past did human sacrifices to Odin. Yes, yes, we agree on that. So go ahead and make your point. Okay. If they believe that the gods are a material force in the world, which they did, even if they didn't believe the gods would show up and fuck them physically, but they did believe that. I know I... I, it was Odin and Thor. They you had some humorous beliefs with history, yeah. They've got uh, Snorri talking about how Freyr is part of the royal family of Sweden or it, whatever. It literally yeah. thought, yeah, like in uh, it's, the uh, It's a Christian's record, but, you know, anyway, whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. They thought even, even if they were just metaphysical forces, Thor being lightning would mean that he could affect the world materially. And 
if you mm-hmm. believe those things, if that's a material belief that you hold un- unerringly, you know, um, people would be executed for like for heresy. I mean, you know, you have to believe this to varying extents. It is not irrational. It is purely logical to then go, yeah, human sacrifices to honor the gods are a good thing. That's a, that's a correct argument if you presuppose the existence of those gods. And that's what makes the religion. You can simple. have the existence of the gods and you can even hold the human sacrifices effective or whatever. Not my position, but let's like let's talk about it. You can still at that point hold a pluralist position and say, regardless of whatever effect human sacrifice has, regardless of it, you, it's still not a preferable position to, or preferable practice to have because of there the harm associated gods. with it. There have been gods. It doesn't matter. It do- if the gods are asking you to do matter. things that are unethical, then fuck that shit. The, for, the, right? Like that's, and that's easy enough to convince somebody to do. If the gods are asking you to harm people that are your friends, there's no reason to actually listen to that shit. But they thought the gods would raise their villages. They, the, the Norse, the the, the 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 pagans didn't believe that the gods were um, necessarily the arbiters of morality, but they did believe they'd be punished for not showing due deference to the gods. Um, oh yeah, so sh- if it's like, if and that's not something. Okay, so this gets, into, uh, this gets into this gets into a misunderstanding of history with respect to pagan belief, where. Uh, it's like, well, they worship the gods because they were afraid of them on some level. This is not what we see bearing out in history when we read these people actually discussing their own religions. Um, usually what's going on is that we see people that are uh, giving and sacrifice and engaging in a system of reciprocity, gifts for a gift, that the, the gods give gifts and they give gifts in return. It's not like, oh, well, we didn't sacrifice to the gods, therefore we're going to be experiencing a, experiencing a tsunami tomorrow or some shit, or that uh, human sacrifice... Why is Vosh going this deep into something he knows nothing about? <laughs> you just described every Vosh topic ever. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why you would decide to enter a debate like that. He has a lot of... Um, he has a lot of arrogance, I think, to where he kind of, and I understand it because I was there probably not even that long ago, maybe a couple years ago. The idea that like once you've debated enough dumb people, you think you can just step in and debate every topic perfectly and that you can destroy anybody on it. But um, yeah, that's the only reason I can think of this. Like that, the one, the aqua guy, that was just like a disaster. Like, oh my God, dude, you need to humble yourself a little. Isis were not participated in or whatever. Like this is getting into like, highly they, superstitious beliefs which we have thought. records of people in history bitching about and saying this is a terrible practice stop fucking doing it because of the they consequences of it there would be consequences for not venerating the gods and benefits to venerating the gods that's pretty common across and like the consequence to human sacrifice is dead humans dead so humans happen all the time you you lose humans sending them out on hunting expeditions but you execute one for the sake of keeping the god from raising your village or ending a drought that's an ethical like argument that lands in your favor ethically it, like if you send a group of people out in a hunting party or a raiding party we're talking about vikings here after all you're right. far more likely to get more death for less gain than maintaining a studious and reverent relationship with your deities so human sacrifice is a logical thing to do but we under- see also in history that if the gods do not receive sacrifice that the substantive damages that happen is not necessarily that that kind of severe People have been Christian for a long time, and especially now, right? Like, if you're gonna, if we're gonna be talking about religiosity now, with the arguments that we have access to, and not just what people think are possible religions that exist, you know what I mean? Because I think that what you're talking about is like, well, if we have a possibility of this religion in which we can possibly come to that conclusion, all that kind of stuff. This is where we get into the religion analogy or the uh, fuck this. Um, I'm not shitting on the guy talking because it seems like he's knowledgeable about like religious stuff, which is cool, but he's not a very, he's not doing well in like the debate thing because there's a lot of contrary points that he could bring up that I think very easily destroy Vosh's arguments here. So like, for instance, like religion is really bad uh, because it's unempirical. So like we should trust things like scientific methods or whatever. It's like, okay, well, phrenology was something that was quote unquote proven by science. Um, There's a lot of trouble that we've gotten into in the past by assuming that science is always this ultra rigid process that delivers us good empirical results because we're empirical and not spiritual or whatever. Um, so you gotta be really careful there. And I'm not here saying religion is better than science, but I'm saying that like, just because the process itself might lend itself to certain things doesn't mean it's always going to produce these horribly negative outcomes. Um, but m- maybe this guy just doesn't wanna be like really rude or whatever too, you know? Okay, I, this Jade tweet is fucking driving me crazy. Can you guys help me with this? I don't understand. (laughs) 
Some of you say my arms look fine, but that is because I always show them in a way that's flattering. These two pictures are exactly one year apart, same shirt. I know there's a difference, but when I look in the mirror, I still see the arms I had one year ago. <laughs> what am I looking at? I'm so confused. <laughs> The right is way better. Is it even? It's a totally different lighting. I don't know if she's even in the same body position. It doesn't look that different to me. Maybe you could say this one might look a little chubbier, maybe? But like, what a weird... She just has hella body dysmorphia. Yeah, I think she does. But I mean, like, there was like, she did the whole plastic surgery arc and everything and who knows what other work, but yeah. She needs to be not on social media. I don't think it's healthy for her mind politics analogy really quickly that you can have people that are organized by uh atheistically fascistically and the problem there is going to be the authoritarianism the problem with what you're talking about is the authoritarian aspect not oh, necessarily kind of just on. mere it's, god no, belief at that point it's the reasoning process it's the belief in anything spiritual that does this it's not the authoritarian aspect there's if you believe if you if that's that okay god, if please, it's please please please, okay, if please, you please. Believe there's a literal god that dictates the reins and that it's represented by a capricious woman and that glory to that woman in the form of sacrifice will bring the rains and end the drought that mm -hmm. w w all, all of the predicating beliefs all of the material assumptions about the nature of rain and that god now you have a logical argument for human sacrifice. That's not about- You can come up with a logical argument for inhumane shit all the fucking time. The thing that I'm saying, and the, and the point, one second, the point of this discussion of which I'm trying to do is not necessarily argue that in any religious construction, you're gonna be able to get entirely, uh, you know, moral people or moral beliefs in any subset. I don't think that that's something you can say about any set of beliefs. You have, when you get into an extremism or fundamentalism representation of any religion, you wind up with these serious problems. Or, and that goes true for any ideology in general beyond the spiritual no, shit. This, hold on, stop. the no, spiritual no, shit no. winds up. Wait, uh, wait, you get you get extremist. You what do you mean? You can't equivocate this to extremist political systems. My argument. This this is the, it is the same thing. I think equivocating is when you are um, equivocating is when you're not quite saying what you mean to say kind of, or you're like, um, so for instance, let's say that I beat the shit out of Melina and she's like got a broken arm and like contu contusions, like head injuries and all this shit. And then I'm like, and, people, and somebody's like, what happened to Melina? It's like, well, we were roughhousing a little bit last night. That's, I think that's equivocating. Um, it's not um, making two things equivalent. That's a different word, but. Religion, I'm arguing against the very concept of making statements about the material world based on metaphysical presumptions it has nothing to do with how well, we've already agreed witness. that metaphysical presumptions said, can be made I, with effect right like that you, in order to study history in order to study logic in order to even to get anywhere in theology in order to get anywhere with logic in the first place you're going to need to make some metaphysical assumptions in order to engage with the external world you need to make hey, metaphysical no, assumptions no. Outside come on we already agreed with that earlier engaging with the world that's not the same as also believing in deities that control the rain right there if you want to explore spiritually there's certain assumptions, assumptions you're going to make just like if you want to explore history there's going to be certain assumptions you're going to make you want to explore mathematics it, it, there's it, certain you assumptions you need to make. make any metaphysical assumptions to understand history at all. You don't have to. You can keep that entirely within the material world. The metaphysics in our case are just bridging consciousness gaps. But you don't need to then go, okay, because we have to bridge the consciousness gap, therefore it's okay to believe in fucking Odin. Like you don't, you can't jump that and then, then run to any metaphysics. No, you did. You have different arguments with respect to deities, right? Like, so with polytheism, yeah. arguments are going to be related to personal experience, the diversity of personal experiences. And then at that point, you're going to be getting into some form of polytheism. That's people the general steps that you're going to be able to get there. And people are going to continue to have spiritual experiences people are going to continue to explore spirituality on the basis of those assumptions it's something that you agreed earlier in this conversation we're just going to have to deal with yes, so yes, from that perspective how do you deal with that socially and that's where i'm <laughs> saying pluralism is preferable to anti-theism because well, anti-theism no, in my opinion is just another supremacy narrative at the end of the day pluralism is not experiences that make them racist or sexist because we have tribal instincts like buried deep in our lizard brain right i'm not um, saying trust every experience right Okay, so right. even though humans are going to keep having tribalistic biases ingrained into their brains, I think you should still principally fight against that. What the problem is and articulate what the actual issue is at the end of the day. And that's where I'm saying all the examples that you're bringing up are extremist fundamentalist expressions of religion.
No, they're not. Wait, is this guy? Can we tweet at this guy? I'd be curious if I could chat with him for like two seconds. Real James Clug. I died a little inside. California. How many stars are on the United States flag? 103. 103? Why would you even guess that number? Yeah. Um, 32. What ocean is on the east side of the United States? What ocean? Can I Google it? <laughs> you guys know this. I know this. I don't know this. What country is the Queen of England from? I'm not a politics guy, man. I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. I really don't know. Just take a guess, like, what country is the Queen of England from? Europe? I don't know. Base. I don't know, I just took a guess. What's the capital of the United States? Um, the, um, there's a capital? <laughs> what? Yes. Lexi! <laughs> take a guess. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, probably California. Yeah, that's right. It is? No. The United States, do we know? Stop, I knew he was going to embarrass us. I know, do you wait? I don't even want to think because I don't want to sound dead. Well, just, uh, There's no capital of the Yeah, United literally. Isn't it, just, is there no capital? Correct. Was that right? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> You guys are UCLA students? We literally students? go to UCLA. It's, uh, yeah. Wait, really? Who's the first president? This is why there were so many homeless people in fucking California because all my tax money was going to UC schools? What are these motherfuckers learning? The United States. Abraham Lincoln? Can you name the uh, three Kardashian sisters? Uh, Kim, Courtney, and Chloe. What are the three Kardashian sisters' names? Courtney, Kim, and Chloe. Chloe, Kim, Courtney, and Courtney. Yeah. Bonus points for the brother? Um, Robert. The Kardashian's brother's name. Robert. What? Rob. What are the Kardashian sisters' names? I don't even know. I ain't gonna lie. Don't know. Okay. That one, you get respect for me on that one. Ooh, did that one guy respond to me? Talking I, about, I, I, were you talking I, about, about? I talked about horoscopes. That's not an extremist fundamentalist aspect of a religion. And horoscopes, we can probably agree, can be practiced without anybody dying in the process. And I think that you, you make a point with respect to horoscopes where it talks about essentializing people. And on that, I agree with you on. And I think I've said as much in the past. But I don't, I, I don't think that when you're looking at practices in general, you should be looking at them under the uh, auspices of what harm they cause and then making a judgment call on that effect. Because people, yes, again, are going to be religious. People are going I mean, to continue exploring religiosity. If you want to talk about the harm religion is causing right now, then you're going to have to wait for fundamentalist Christians to die off. Because if we're talking uh, yeah, about... I, and we need to be able to criticize fundamentalist Christians without attacking our allies, right? Wait, and yeah, that's why I'm saying pluralism is the way to go. There are allies who have toxic masculine tendencies. You can still target toxic masculinity while being like you, you you're jumping between like spiritual critiques and ethical positions and like the pragmatics because the, of the, coalition building. The spiritual critiques that you're making and the spiritual critiques that I think that are a good system to go under are both ethical considerations. Right? If unless you think that human sacrifice is bad for some reason other than ethical ethical reasons. I think that it's bad for ethical reasons, unless right. you believe that there's a god who will end a drought, in which case I think it's ethically good to do because you've now established supernatural. That's just a bad argument. I think it, no, at, at not, that point, no. I, if you're going to say that okay. human sacrifice is ethical under certain considerations. Wait, absolutely. Wait. Why? Especially back in those days, we sacrificed people all the time to go on hunting trips, to go on expeditions, to go gather resources. Right. All the time they lost people. If you could end a drought that's plaguing a country of millions with a human sacrifice, that is an incredibly straightforward ethical assumption. And, for at that this, at, at, and in this time period, that is an extremist notion. Right. Uh, there are places in the world right now that are suffering from drought. What if you could end, what if you could like in West Africa end malaria with a human sacrifice? Can it be done? Well, I'm not religious, so. You wanna, uh, there, the thing is there's like, there's so many, damn. Listening to this discussion is like, what is the point? He's like, so it's like such a basic engagement with the, with the subject matter. So here is the truly interesting way to, to engage with religious arguments. Um, food for thought. I'm not saying that any of this is necessarily true. Just something to think about, okay? There could be two possibilities. You might think that in the past, the world is random and chaotic, and there 
is no order to things because it truly is a godless, crazy place. And you don't have any tools to investigate or understand. Or it might be the case that there are some gods behind things. There is some order. Like most of the traditional religious practices that involve like sacrifice and shit are probably going to be in a way those people's only ways of empirically validating the world. And in some ways, it's probably gonna lead them to better thoughts than just saying that the world is chaotic. Now, the best way would be to have a fully vetted scientific process, of course. But like, here's the issue with the examples that Vosh brings up. My understanding would be, is that if you had a traditional society where like, we need to start sacrificing people to make our crops work. If they started sacrificing people and the crops weren't growing, they'd probably be more likely to interpret that as like, wow, I guess this, these things aren't making the gods happy, so we ought to try something different. Maybe if we do this or this or this, these types of things will make the gods happy, and that's how we get crops growing. Um, I don't think that there would be a, a, a ancient or historical society where they start doing a bunch of random shit and murdering a ton of people, and it's not producing good outcomes, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, oh, well, we just need to kill even more people. Now, you do run into problems with things like religion where they might kill somebody and there happens to be a lot of rain and now they start doing a bad practice. But I'm willing to bet that some of these bad practices got weeded out over time just because you know there, there wasn't like the empirical validation behind it. If you keep doing something dumb as a tribe over and over again and you're not rewarded by a god, you probably would think that your god is unhappy with what you're doing. That'd be my guess. That's like a more fair way, I think, to engage with some historic practices. That's probably why historically, even though a lot of these people didn't have strong scientific methods, uh, they were able to stumble into some things that were true, like discovering ancient herbs and medicines by using, you know, roots of trees or parts of the forest, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that's a more interesting engagement with, um, I think that's a more interesting engagement with this topic than just like all religious people have um, incoherent or bad thought processes or whatever. What happened with the Aztecs though? They started sacrificing like crazy when their civilization was falling apart. I would have to look more precisely into why they sacrificed people or how much they did it, but. No. Right, I'm, but I'm, and I, that's that not an expression of religion that I would be holding to. I think that if, if you're going to be engaging in harmful practices, it should not be done. But if, harmful practice is bad. If right, and we can make criticisms of religions on the basis of their harmful practices. You would be saving hundreds of thousands of lives if you believed it could be done. Would you agree it's an ethically right thing to do? Like, hey, any does anyone volunteer in the entirety of West Africa? One person is willing to lay themselves down on the table. I'm not. Like I'm not interested in getting convinced into some sort of human sacrifice notion. Wait, it's wait, not something that I would. Wait, hold. wait, 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 wait. If you believed that malaria, the biggest killer of humans, next to like cancer or whatever, could be ended. Yeah, this is con yeah, as my chat's kind of pointing this out. This is consequentialist thinking. I'm. I am I'm within. Yeah, you're. Oh, no. if, that would be it's a big not. difference between us then, because I think that well, an action that is ethically wrong is not going to be the best approach in order to actually deal with a problem it, like it this. It wouldn't be an action that's ethically wrong. The consequences of it would be good. Therefore, it would be- Yeah, this is this is the problem with consequentialism, not a problem with religious thinking. No, it, it it's this is very basic. Like your, this is your position, not mine at this point, mm -hmm. that you're saying that if you held religiosity Wait, if, and were a consequentialist, this would be the you, result, right? But this is a problem with consequentialism. That, happen, that malaria could be ended with that. You would then say, no. Malaria should continue. Hundreds of thousands should die every year. Not one person. I think that at some point, you, if if you have that situation as a reality, then you're going to find like a couple of consequentialists that are probably going to be engaging with that on a consensual basis between each other, and then the problem does whatever it does. But that does not mean that I'm necessarily going to be condoning it because I'm not a fucking consequentialist at the end of the day. I'm. I believe that if you're going to be having practices that are harmful, then you need to be criticizing those practices on the basis of harm. But right, but you need this, malaria those would be they can be. Uh, sorry, I misspoke. They uh, these practices can be criticized on the basis of their harm, right? So like allowing malaria to continue, which would be the consequence of not allowing something. That's not to be is the religious practice is not doing something a practice. I'm sorry. Is not doing something a practice? Absolutely. Wait, absolutely. You're okay. You're absolutely. Then responsible we're, for what happens if you choose not to do something? Yes. Okay, um, then sure. And that can be like a large ethical conversation. But I think that at that point, you're going to want to talk about what, like how effective those practices are going to be. Well, and now at that point, if this, if this situation arises, what is going to be your position? Do you hold that we should do the human sacrifice at that point? To save hundred. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's, that's, and then that's, that's, that would be your position. I'm, sure. I'm not necessarily of that position because of the harmful practice aspect. I like, 
because then we're opening the door to doing human sacrifice for all kinds of stuff. We're building a cultural narrative and sort of in, to getting into human sacrifices as a regular practice generally. And that's military. something that is going to be creating a superstitious angle. And I'm not into we, that. We sacrifice our soldiers so that they can affect good like geopolitical outcomes. World War II, we made the decision like, yeah, tens of thousands of our soldiers can die because it's better. That's a little bit different of a pra like a fight is a different practice than like killing them yourself. Blood is the only relevant human currency when it comes to great actions that are recorded in history books, I'm afraid. No what you choose, <laughs> yes, quote. No, abstaining us Epic Vosh quote. Going to get but you're going to also Ooh, agree epic, that some of those epic, actions are unethical. You epic. can make an unethical action and have beneficial consequences from it. This is ends justify the means, and we see that throughout history, too. That doesn't mean it's something we ought do. Well, that's consequentialism if the, the ends do. Right, justify. and that's where our, a big difference between us. Let me try and make this argument in a way to appeal to the consequentialism, though. So if you're going to be, if you're wanting to uh, engage in a way, engage in a way that is going to create change, you're going to want to get as many people on your side as possible. Yeah, and therefore, you're going to be wanting to engage in a pluralist I, standard rather I, than an antithesis standard. In reaching out to guys who have like toxic masculine aspects, but I'll still sit on here and argue that toxic masculinity is bad for like seven hours straight. This isn't, sure. I, I'm not pitching this to a crowd right now. I'm just talking about my basic beliefs about what what types of thoughts are good, what what's structured well. I'm not making like the case for like the 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 pan religious like socialist union of America or whatever. If I was, then I wouldn't talk about any of this because I don't think I can convince anyone or affect any positive change like while pitching it there behind the podium. Right. But if you're right gonna, here, if, if you're going to hold a position that is anti theist, then and then when you're expressing it on your channel, you're going to deal with this EQTH guy. I I think this guy was here in my chat before, but I could be wrong. There was a guy in my chat a few months ago that was like spam linking like the lab leak thing, like look at this lab leak article, look at this lab leak. But I mean, I only have so many. I have so much time of the day for so many conspiracy theories. Okay, Jesus. Engaging in political action, right? I talk about toxic masculinity on my channel. Right, you talk about, to, and that's good. So do I. I've got a, a video on toxic masculinity as well. So uh, we're on the same page with respect to that. But well, we're, I think agree. that we would agree that toxic masculinity is in all cases bad, right? Well, if it's toxic masculinity, by definition, it has to be bad. Right. So toxic. we can also talk about toxic religiosity, right? Uh, well, I would just think religiosity is toxic religiosity. Right. And so, any, like, I think that with masculinity, you can have beneficial expressions of masculinity, and you can have beneficial expressions of, regi of religiosity. We can just, we can That's separate fine. the issues by saying... I'll debate COVID. Yeah, I'm interested in talking about, like, mRNA vaccines and, like, stuff related to immunology. Not, like, the really shady, spurious, random claims of, like, this guy had this stock and that person was erased from that website and blah, blah, blah. The lab leak theory is infinitely less interesting. Unless some actual hard data or information comes out relating to it. But the, um, uh, but like the, 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 the lab leak shit is like one of the most boring fucking, yeah, maybe in the future, who knows, but. We're not demonizing masculinity. We're talking about toxic masculinity and we're not demonizing religiosity. We're talking about toxic religiosity. And I that's the criticisms that were that were being made by uh, Plutarch and Theophrastus in the past. They were talking about toxic expressions of religiosity. But I am talking about all religiosity. It's not about the outcomes. It's the thought process. And so there's no benefit. In inexplicable to you. How many of these beams were cut, firstly? 9-11 truthers are so fucking bad at arguing. Of course Destiny's just gonna hand wave away this evidence. Because evidence like this is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. The whole frame needs reversed. Like, the onus shouldn't be on us to provide this 100% conclusive theory that accounts for every little variable. The onus should be on them to explain the gaping holes in the official story and the extremely sus behavior surrounding the official story. And the emphasis should be on the motives for 9-11, not these tedious architectural and engineering details. That can be easily hand waved away. Sure. Is this guy? If this guy wants to chat, um, I might be able to chat tonight if he wants to. Don't know who he is, but you explain to me why Larry Silverstein and his family weren't there, and why months prior to the attacks, he took out a multi-billion-dollar insurance plan on the World Trade Center that specifically covered terrorist attacks via. Where? Who is this guy? <laughs> Bring him on. These are all, all, he has all the easiest ones. Listen, we're, we might be doing a lot of 9-11 debate, okay? Cause I just wasted three or four days researching this shit.
Um, I'll use my knowledge to, to, to steamroll some dudes in a debate if he wants to, okay? Because, oh, he's on Gab? Uh, yeah, I, fuck, I don't even know how to reach out to somebody. Well, hey, make sure word gets back to him, okay? I'm dragging his name in the streets. Make sure that word gets back to this guy. And we'll see if he wants to step two, all right? Official religiosity to you. Everything that can be- Fuck, how does this go on for another hour? Every time I listen to Vosh debates, they're like circling the drain, and I'm like, damn, I guess they're winding up soon. And then I'll go and <laughs> I'll check the time, and there's always like 12 hours left in the debate. I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. Be done from religiosity that is good can be done through secular means. And even if that wasn't the case, I would still be against religiosity. It is so far down. I, even I if it wasn't the case, okay. Part. I like, I, this is, you can get this is where we get into toxic narratives of uh, atheism, in my opinion. This is a, this where if you have toxic veganism, if you have toxic leftism, you get like fucking tankies that have narratives in which they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic Christianity, that's when you get into authoritarian fundamentalism where everybody, if they think they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic pagans, you get folkists who are racist shitheads who think oh, they're better than everybody wrong. else. And then you have toxic atheists who are anti-theists who engage in a supremacy narrative in which they think they're better it's than everybody else and want the world to be secular. Oh, wait, please stop. Okay, go ahead. Again, it's not about being better than religious people. There are plenty of religious people who are in almost every every imaginable sense more accomplished and more impressive than I am. It is about religion, the openness to spiritualism, being a fundamentally destructive thought process that erodes the ability to the make- same argument applies to politics, man. No, like, if you're, if you're open politics, to political narratives, then you're open to toxic right. political narratives. You, it's not about whether or not it's talk. You keep, okay. You keep again, doing this thing. This is the, the, you, the toxic masculinity thing is such a great, is such a better example because it's not about toxic religion versus non-toxic. I am attacking all of it. Right, so, unjustifiably, I think. Okay, you yeah. may think that. Go ahead. You keep, you keep relating this to like, well, politics can have bad outcomes. I know everything right. can have bad outcomes. Because the criticism you're applying applies there. No, it isn't. Because okay. I think religiosity fundamentally erodes the capacity to make logical arguments because you're capable of adding supernatural justifications for ethical Ooh. arguments. There's a whole study of philosophy of religion that it requires logical arguments of people going back and forth over this issue. And if, if what you were saying was true, hold on, if what you're saying was true, in, in philosophy of religion, you would have the atheist being like, these theists are absolutely crazy. They're not using logical arguments no, at all, I right? I say religious people can't use logic. There are plenty of logical religious right, people. But you said fundamentally, which means yeah. that, it's, right? It's like, like, yeah, so it's fundamentally an issue, which means it's that it's not. there's not exceptions. No, yes, that is correct. Religion okay. is fundamentally an erosive force when it comes to rational thought, but there are still rational people in spite of their religion, much in the same way that there are people who are overwhelmingly good, but you might say that it's like fundamentally bad to under tip waiters. So you can have people who are like 99.9% .9 good, but they always under tip the waiters and that's shitty of them to do and that should be criticized, but it's still possible to be like a generally really great person. I don't, yeah, this is, this is a, just a claim that you're not able to demonstrate in my opinion. Like if you have positive world. manifestations of religion. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. If I, okay, if I am a rational, um, uh, uh, um, uh, non-religious person, as long as you and I have the same basic axioms of well-being, mm -hmm. it should always be possible to change my mind on something. If you give counterexamples on empirics, you should always be able to adjust my position. There's always going to be some variety there because so much of what people understand about the world. Right, is you'd have a rational atheist and all that kind of stuff. I think that we've we've already agreed on that. Yeah, but so but it, theoretically, if you took a rational person mm -hmm. and they were a, a a secular, it should be possible. But if there was a religious person who had super like supernatural justifications for some of their positions, beliefs about the world that aren't tied directly to empirical analysis, even if you had the same basic axioms, if they had a disagreement with you based on some of those presuppositions, it would not be possible to change their mind because it's rooted in something outside the bounds of physical logic. You would have to- This is where, all right, so again, this is like where I was talking about ethical constraints on religion that we've seen manifest in history a few times, going back to Plutarch and Theophrastus where Plutarch is criticizing um, the superstitious, the superstitiousness of human sacrifice and as a harmful practice and the effects of that. And then uh, Theophrastus is talking about um, superstition as it relates to the harm to your personal life. 
I'm now, curious, you can, could you convince such a person that they were wrong in what they were doing? If you can demonstrate it to them, I think that I, it's, it can be difficult, but I think it's difficult to convince people uh, that they're wrong on things that they're wrong about generally. Ever tried convincing you know? a religious person that they're following their religious doctrine too closely? That you think that's it's yeah, easy to that's that's them. something that comes up. I've I've managed a, a community full of religious people. We have conversations around that all the time, uh, with respect to okay, wait, is there's uh, mythic literalism is something that I that crit is criticized within my community. That's basically it, within Christianity that would manifest as creationism. I think that that when you're taking uh, religious documents to a absolute literal standpoint, you're going to get ridiculous results like thinking that plants predate the sun, which can be empirically shown is not true. Wait, right? why, would, why would a person who believes in a god care about empirics? Why would the faulty tools of man stand up to the word of God printed on the Bible? Yeah, this is where you get into fundamentalism, which is something that we're criticizing. Okay, let's, let's try this from I, a different perspective. I'm okay. now Christian. Uh, or no, I'm actually a pagan. Okay. Um, Okay, and okay. I hold a variety of beliefs, and cool. I want you to explain okay. to me how they're how they're morally wrong. Okay. 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 So, I dedicate eighty percent of all my earnings to a teeth to the local church because I believe that if I don't do so, I'll be struck down by lightning in my. You mean sleep. a tithe? Tithe. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So, like, getting eighty percent of your earnings is something that is well beyond means, and. Like that's not unless you're making a shitload of money, that's you're not going to be able to live very well off of that, and that's what we're going to be talking about Theophrastus, right? That's that's you are bringing harm to your own life in your religious practice, and, and that's something that is not going to be helpful or productive to you. It does, and it's the god, <laughs> so I'll and? die. Right, and this at the, there's a point of like if somebody is just dead convinced that they're going to be engaging in self harm, there's only so much logical reasoning that you can give to somebody to that, if they're religious it's or not. Like God. if somebody is just like I f like if somebody's talking about self harm from a pers from any number of perspectives, honestly, and they're dead convinced that they're going to be doing it, it's difficult to convince them out of how it. How can you how can you convince a person that self harm is wrong if that self? But I gave you a logical argument true. about it, and you just said so, right? If you if whatever logical that, that ethical the, argument that I give to anybody, if their response is so, and their ethics just disagree with you, this is something that is well outside the bounds of a religious conversation. Wait, no, it's not. It's God. Yeah, it, the point of gods is that they're above us. You know, you for personally, I think it's and this is I'm being serious. Right. Incredibly okay. funny when pagans come on my stream and they talk about gods that are buddy buddy. They're above you. That's the point. If you die for them, that's fine. They are literally the mesh that holds the world together for you guys. The idea, like the idea that yeah, no, there's a they, kind of like abstemious with, ethical argument. We're with like polytheism. Oh, we would never do a Hold human on. sacrifice. I, I'm going to agree with you, but also disagree with you here, because with pay, with. Uh, the majority of polytheist traditions that I'm familiar with, yes, the gods are above us. This is this buddy buddy thing. I would agree with you. Winds up being like a different kind of toxic, and I think that that winds up being like an overcorrection of former Christians. But at the same time, toxic? say what? How is that toxic? If you believe the, it, you believe the, it. Not... The buddy buddy thing. No, the no the oh, uh, oh no. sorry no the the hierarchical them being above us self harm for them thing like how is that harmful at all? It's just as because it, uh, wait you just talked about self harm evil. and then asked how it was harmful it's self it's harmful because it's self harm. No, that applies to my logic. Fuck. Okay, this is really boring. <laughs> Damn, these discussions are so bad. What do they feel like is being achieved in? And it's a bad discussion because of Vosh. This guy seems like he's a little bit more capable of engaging, but... Good morning, John. Today, I think Vosh is Joe just Biden stupid or lost his ability to engage. Um, I don't know. It seems hard for him to understand what other people are saying or to make what he's saying kind of compatible or understandable to people that he's talking about. 